Hello makers, I'm Katherine Harris with Minerva and I wanted to share with you a sew along for our latest Minerva kit and that is the Indigo Smock Top or Dress. So let's get into it. Now the first thing that you are going to want to do is gather up all of the supplies that you are going to need to create your indigo top or dress. Now if you're choosing one of our kits, we have everything all laid out for you and I will link it down below. We do have a number of different fabrics to choose from. And the first thing that you'll get in your kit is some beautiful crepe de chêne fabric and you'll need about 2.5 meters of this. Next up, you are going to need your pattern. And if you chose the kit, you are going to get a paper version of the Tilly and the Buttons pattern. And this pattern comes in UK sizes 6 through 24. And what that means is a bust measurement of 30 inches through to 48 inches, a waist measurement of 24 inches through to 42 inches, as well as a hip measurement of 33 inches to 51 inches. Now, if you are outside of that size range, have no worries. You can either add on a little extra on the pattern pieces itself because they are very simply drafted. It would be easy to add on just a couple of extra inches if you need that. Or if you're not as concerned, you may not have to do very much at all because this isn't a very fitted garment. It is very forgiving in terms of fit because it is meant to be a loose smock style top or dress. Now, next up, what you're going to need is some interfacing. And so we've included a package of fusible interfacing in with this. And then you're going to need some thread. So you have a matching color of thread, which is a Guterman thread, but we also include a second spool of thread in a contrasting color. Now, the reason for this is you're going to be doing some basting stitches and you need to be able to easily pull out those threads. Hence the reason we have a contrasting thread color. And last but not least, we are going to need some universal needles and we've included a 7010 needle package for you to get started. Now, once you have everything all ready, the first thing you're going to do, like always, is you are going to launder your fabric the way in which you would wash and dry your finished garment. I like to pop mine in the washer and the dryer, even though I tend to hang a lot of my laundry to dry. I just like to pre-shrink everything and ensure that if there are any colors that potentially may bleed, that they run out. And once you've done that, you are going to need to either cut out your pattern pieces or my personal preference, I like to trace them on tissue. And I actually use a uh, tracing paper and I trace over my size. That way, if I do happen to change sizes or I'd like to make this as a gift for someone else, I don't have to rebuy the pattern in a different size. I can use that same pattern over and over again and just have the traced sizes. Once you have all of that, all ready, we can begin sewing. So the interfacing, pattern marking, and stay stitching. So we're going to start with our interfacing. Now I have cut four small strips and those are going to go on to interface the pockets later. Now we're going to do the facing. So for our back and front facing, we are going to place the fusible interfacing on the wrong side and make sure to iron down your fabric first to get rid of any wrinkles and then add the interfacing on top. Now you want to use a press cloth. I am using a silk organza press cloth right here and just Put your iron down and then pull it up. Don't slide it around and that will help to prevent any wrinkles when you are fusing your interfacing. So once again, we are just going to warm that up and make sure you place it with the glue dots down. Otherwise, it's going to stick to your pressing cloth. And then 
press down and you can use a decent amount of steam that can really help to set that interfacing as well. So I'm just trimming off a little bit of extra interfacing here along the side. And then I'm going back in with my pattern piece and I'm adding my notches to this so that I can see them in a later step. Next, we are going to mark the darts. So I have marked the notches from the pattern and I am just going in and marking that. Next, we are going to stay stitch the neckline. So you're gonna do that for the front and the back, start at the shoulders and then go in towards the center. Once you hit the center, then you're going to flip it around and then starting at the shoulder, you're going to go back down towards the center. That prevents the neckline from stretching out of shape. Now for the bust darts. So for the darts, we are going to place a pin in the point of the dart, and then we are going to pinch it together. You're going to match up the bottom of the legs and then place a pin along here. You can see that I'm flipping my fabric back, just double checking on the wrong side that I am indeed going through that leg of the dart. And if I'm not, I just slightly shift that fabric underneath and place the pin through. So you can see it's just slightly off. So what I'm going to do is just shift it using my fingers and just pinching there and put it in and it is perfectly on the line. And then we are going to stitch it. So we are going to do that for both of the darts on the bodice. So starting at that open end, not the point, we are going to backstitch at this end and then just follow that line along the dart. But when you get to the point, do not backstitch. This creates too much bulk. Instead, leave a long tail of thread and then go in and separate the top thread from the bobbin thread. Once you have them separated, go ahead and do two or three knots. And this is what is going to secure your thread tails and prevent them from unraveling. And then you can just trim those down. Now we're going to press our darts. So I am going to press them down towards the bottom of the bodice and the skirt. So we're going to do that on both sides. Just warm up the tip of the dart before going in and pressing the remainder of the dart. And this is what it will look like from the right side. Just make sure that everything is pressed nicely. And don't forget to use a pressing cloth on this to save your fabric. Now for the shoulder seams. So with this, we are going to place the bodice right sides together. And I like to match up either end of the shoulder and then the little notch that is in the center of the shoulder seam, then you can match that up with a single pin because it's not a very long seam to stitch. Then we are going to stitch that. Once it's stitched, you can finish that. I chose to use my overlocker or serger, but you could also zigzag. Next, we are going to press the shoulder seams towards the back of the bodice. So you'll notice that there are two notches that denote the back of the sleeve, and that's how you know which way you're going to press those shoulder seams. And it should look just like so. Now onto the neckline facing. So with this, we are going to place both of our facing pieces right sides together. And you should only need a couple of pins since this is a small seam here. And once we have that all nicely pinned, head on over to the sewing machine and stitch that in place. Then we're going to press that. So don't go and finish the edges on this. You don't need to do that, especially with that fusible interfacing. But you do want to press this seam open. So you definitely don't want to stitch that together like you would if you were using an overlocker because you want it to lie nice and flat. The next thing that you need to do is place the front and back facing right sides together over the bodice, match up those shoulder seams first. So I like to go in a pin right along that seam line and really make sure that I am matching them up perfectly. And then you can go in and there are the notches that we have on both the facing as well as the bodice front and back, match up those notches and then distribute a few more pins to hold everything in place. Then go ahead and stitch around the outside. Next, take your scissors and snip into the curves about an inch apart. And the reason we do this is to create ease when we go to turn it so you won't get any puckering. 
Then we're going to finish the edge. I used an overlocker, but you could also zigzag that. If you are using an overlocker, you are going to need to finish those tails. You can't just snip them or it will unravel. So use your darning needle to push it right through here and then easily pop it out through the other side. So once you get that needle through, then you can take that tail and just snip off the ends and this will secure it in place and it won't unravel on you. Next, we are going to press that seam. And so you're going to press it towards the facing. So using your pressing cloth, just go over and press that seam down nicely. Just making sure that you get all those little pieces because we have done those snips in there. It's just making sure they're all laying nice and flat because what we're going to do now is we are going to understitch. So on the right side of the facing, we're going to stitch all the way around the edge, tacking down that seam allowance. So it should look just like this. Seam allowance is tacked down. That way, when you fold it to the inside, none of that facing is going to come out, which is very nice. And then what you can do is press that. So we are just going to press the top edge of the facing going all the way around, making sure everything is lying nice and neatly. So I'm just going in here, making sure that everything is rolled down and getting everything exactly where it needs to be. And once that is all done, we want to tack that facing in place. So what I am doing here is I am matching up the shoulder seams so that they lie exactly on top of one another. And then I am placing a couple of pins in here, and then we can head on over to the machine and tack that in place, and you are not even going to see those stitches. They will be buried inside that seam on the shoulder seam. So when you get to your machine, pop your needle down. I like to start along the folded edge by the facing and the bodice, and I'm working on the right side of my fabric just in case I'm slightly off. Backstitch a couple of stitches at the start, and the end of that pin marks the end of my facing. So I'm just going to go right up to that pin, backstitch, and then cut my threads. And now my facing is secured along that shoulder seam. Now for the bodice side seams. So with this, we are going to take our bodice and place it right sides together. And we are going to match up either end and just place a couple of pins in here and make sure that you pin that dart down to make sure that that dart stays in that downward direction. And when you're stitching, it doesn't get pushed back upwards, which will create an odd shape. Then you are going to stitch that all the way down, just like so, and then add in some seam finishing like an overlocker. Next, we are going to press these seams towards the back. So the dart is on the front. So we are going to press that towards the back of our bodice. And I like to use a decent amount of steam with this fabric just to really set that press in place. And this fabric does press quite nicely. And it will look like so. Now for the pockets. Now, you know those strips of interfacing we cut at the very beginning? Well, make them just long enough to extend just past the length of the pocket. So on the wrong side here, we are going to add back in those pocket notches. I'm just using some chalk. That way I know exactly where to place those pockets. And we're going to repeat that for both the front and back skirt pieces on both the left and right sides. So next I have overlocked the edges of the skirt as well as the pockets. And then I'm going to place the pocket bags on top of the skirt. I'm going to match up the notches with the ends of the pocket on the right side here. And I am just going to stitch along here. Make sure the pocket bag is facing downwards so that little hump doesn't go upwards. You want to be able to put things into your pockets without having them fall apart. And repeat that for all sides. So once it is stitched on here, we need to press this open. So just press this with the seams pressed towards the pocket bag. And I like to stitch it down. Now for the skirt side seams. So with this, we are going to place the skirt front and back right sides together. 
And I like to match up the junction where the pockets are first, then I'll go in and do the top, add in a couple of pins, match the junction where the pocket meets along the bottom of the pocket, and then the bottom of the skirt, and add in the pins going along here. And last but not least, I like to then go in and place the pins along the pocket bag. And just continue to place them as needed. And then we are going to go in and we are going to stitch going around that pocket bag, pivoting and going down. And we're going to repeat that on the other side as well, like so. Next, you are going to take your shears and snip into the corners, but not going through your stitching so that you are able to press open the sides. So press open those seams along the top and the bottom of the side seams of your skirt along both sides. This really helps your skirt to lie nice and flat. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to press the pocket bag towards the front of the skirt, because of course that is where we want our pocket to lie. It's the front. It'd be a little odd having a pocket lie along the back of your skirt. Now for attaching the bodice to the skirt, the frill seam skirt. So with this, we are going to stitch all around the edge with our serger and then do a basting stitch, which is a five millimeter length stitch. And we want it to be nice and long so we can take it out nice and easy. Then we are going to turn under a double fold hem a quarter of an inch. And we are going to do that around the entire skirt here. And once you get to the other side, we're going to flip it over one more time, that quarter of an inch to get the double fold hem here. And I am just holding it down with my fingers. And because I had measured that first one and I have done quite a few quarter inch seams, I'm not using my ruler along the entire hem here. That being said, if you want to, and to be a little bit more accurate, you most certainly can. And I find that using steam really helps to set this in place. And if you are adventurous, you could use no pins, but I always like to be cautious and add in those pins, especially on a smaller hem like this. So I am going in and rather than placing them vertically, I am placing them horizontally in line with where I'm going to be stitching because it is so narrow. It just makes it a little bit easier to place the pins and hold this in place. Then we are going to stitch around the entire edge of this hem here. So it should look just like so. And now we are going to do some basting stitches. In fact, we are going to do three rows of basting stitches. And I like to start and stop my stitches at the side seams where we have the seams here. And that way you're not actually pulling your thread through any of that extra bulk of the side seams. And I do find that it is easier to gather your stitches when you do it this way because you can quarter your skirt. And I will show you that in a little bit here when we get to that part. You can see that I'm starting and stopping along here. And by doing three rows of these gathering stitches rather than two, it really helps to create a perfectly even gathering stitch. So right here, you can see where I have started and stopped all of my stitches. And here I'm going to quarter the skirt. So I'm just marking the center front and the center back. And obviously those side seams mark the other quarter points. Next, we are going to do the exact same thing on the bodice. So we've already got these side seams marked, and then we need to mark the center front and center back. So you can't just fold it in half because the center front is larger than the center back. So match up those side seams and then mark that center front and center back with a piece of chalk or a water soluble marker. And now for the fun part, gathering up all those stitches. So what you need to do is you need to place the skirt on top of the bodice right along that basting line that we drew. And I'm doing my center front first, and then I'm going to match up each side seam, making sure that I'm placing it in here. And because I'm placing my pin in between the 
area that we're going to be pulling the threads, it really helps things to stay in place nicely. And then do the same thing for the center back. And now we can begin to pull on these gathering threads. So grabbing the bobbin threads, so not the top threads, but the bobbin threads, go in and gather up to that center point where we have that pin. And the pin will stop those additional gathers. What I found to work really well is to place a quilting ruler underneath when you go to pin, because then you're not going to pin anything underneath your dress. And so I am going in and placing my pins in vertically so that I can really distribute where those ruffles and gathers are going, especially because this is going to have a nice frilled detail because it has that exposed frill. You really want to make sure that things are nice and even along here and distributed quite nicely. So I'm just pulling gently, distributing them to where I like, and then I am adding in all of those additional pins. Then I flip it right upside down and repeat that process for the back side. Make careful point that the top of that frill, so that folded edge of the frill, is right along that stitch line that we basted into the bodice. We will be removing that stitch line from the bodice at a later point, but this really helps to keep that skirt even because if it goes off even just slightly, it will be rather noticeable when it is worn. So once that is done, just go ahead and top stitch that in place. So this is stitched on here. So you can see that I've got it stitched nicely on here. And now we need to remove all of these basting stitches. Now you could try to pull them out, but when you pull them out, they just break. So go in with your seam ripper and just remove some of those stitches. And I am just going in here and I find that it works really well. If you take out just a couple of stitches, then you can go in and pull out those longer threads and it comes out a little bit easier. Now that one that goes along the top of the bodice is very easy to take out because it is a single layer and there's no stitching going through it. Now for the sleeves. So with this, we have two notches on one end and a single in the other. We are going to do two rows of long basting stitches, five millimeters long, so that we can gather this between those two notches. Then we are going to place it right sides together and we are going to stitch along the sleeve here. And once that's done, I also decided to overlock the edges. And then we are going to press the seam towards, you guessed it, the back. So the one with the two notches is where we are going to be pressing it to. So give that a nice gentle press. And now for the cuffs, and these are so gorgeous. They are one of my favorite features on this dress. So you're going to place this right side together and you are going to stitch it as well as overlock the edges just to seal everything up. And then I am going to do three rows of gathering stitches along the top. And then I am going to overlock the edge of the actual sleeve. Here I am measuring out that three quarters of an inch so that I can add that frill in, which is the same that we had done with the skirt. Stitch that in place with your basting stitch and then do a double quarter inch hem along the bottom of the cuff right here and I am just pinning this in place and then I will go ahead and top stitch it and then I am going to quarter this just like we did with the bodice so folding it in half and then just marking those quarter points on the sleeve with my marker here and I'm doing the same thing for the cuff and so with the cuff, I didn't need to start and stop the gathering stitches anywhere other than the beginning, which you want to start and stop along that seam line. So you're not actually going through any seams as well. So once again, that little trick with the quilting ruler, place the sleeve in there and then flip the cuff right side out. And you can start to pull a bit of the gathering stitches up. I find it's easier to do this when it's not on the board and then pull it through on the quilting ruler and 
match it up to that line that we want it to go on and also match up those seams along the underside of the sleeve. We want that to match up. So I'm pinning that first Then I'm coming to the other side and there is my notch right here. I'm matching them both up for the center front and placing it right along that stitching line. Once I have that, I can go and find the other notches on the quarter points on my sleeve, place pins in there, and then distribute those ruffles nicely between there. And you can see that I'm just manipulating some of those gathers a bit, pull out that ruler, stitch it up, and it should look just like so. So you can see that it is stitched all in place. And then we just need to pull out all of those basting and gathering stitches. So with this one, it's a little bit easier to pull out by hand, but there's still some portion on the edge here that you need to get your seam ripper out just to pull out any of those loose threads. This part's a little bit time consuming, but it is well worth it to get that nice ruffle detail. Now you can make this dress without this ruffle detail, just do it as a regular seam, but I wanted to show you this method. Now next, the inside of the bodice has a side with two notches, that being the back, and a single notch, which is the front. So you want to place your sleeve and your bodice right sides together. First things first, I like to match up the top of the sleeve, which is a single notch at the top with the shoulder seam on the bodice. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to place a vertical pin. Then I like to match up the underside of the sleeve with the side seam of the bodice, place a nice pin in here. Now next, you have absolutely no gathers from the single and double notches to the bottom of the sleeve. So what you can do is you can just pin like regular till you get up to either that single notch if you're on the front or double notch if you are along the back of the sleeve as shown right here. Once you get to those notches, this is where we need to start gathering. So pull up the bobbin threads. And in this case, I chose to use the bobbin threads on the back because I knew that's how I'd be gathering them. And then gather that up to that center point and then just distribute those ruffles. Then do the same thing on the other side. By doing it this way, it ensures that you get an even distribution of those ruffles on both the front and the back of your sleeve. And then go ahead and stitch that in place as well as finishing it with an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. And your sleeve should look like this. Now we just have to hem the bottom of that flounce cuff. So we are going to do a quarter inch double fold hem right along here. So the same type of a hem that we had used for those frill details. And so I'm just going in here and making sure that it is nice and even along the sleeve. And once again, when I am done pressing this, I like to add in a couple of pins just to secure it in place because this is rather narrow and it can come unfolded just a little bit. So I'm just going to place that in. And once we have all of the pins placed, you can head on over to your sewing machine and just stitch all the way around that flounce and it will look just like so. Now for the hem. So the skirt hem, you're going to do a stitching line at five eighths of an inch. And then right along that line, take your iron and press it. Once you are done pressing along that line, then you can fold it once again. So it will be a double five eighths of an inch hem. Now for the reveal. And just like that, we are all done our Tilly and the Buttons indigo smock dress or blouse. This is such a fun and quick make, and I'd really class this as a beginner friendly project simply because you don't have any fiddly fastenings to worry about. So there are no stitching on buttons or doing buttonholes, creating plackets. There are no zips. You just pop this on over your head and you're really learning some great basic skills such as inserting facings, as well as learning to do gathering and basting stitches that really provide a great foundation for other more complex skills. 
That being said, this pattern is fantastic even if you are an advanced sewer, simply because of the versatility that it has. It is cute and stylish and it has a lot of different variations in terms of your sleeves, sleeve options, lengths, as well as it being a top or a dress. And it also has an option for a paid add-on pack that you can add on to this, allowing you to have a short sleeve either with or without the flounce, a button placket in the back to really up those skills, as well as a tiered layer on the bottom of the skirt version, turning it into a maxi skirt. You combine all of these different options together and you have 48 different variations of garments that you can choose from. That is quite a lot in a pattern. So I really think that it gives a lot of variation to your unique style that you can really change up depending on your mood. Now, if you've made this pattern, do let me know in the comments down below. I would love to know which variation you chose to go with. As well, if you have any questions or comments about the construction of this and how any of this came together, do let us know in the comments and we'll be sure to get back to you as soon as we're able. Now, if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you wanna catch more videos like this, just follow hashtag Minerva TV and hashtag SewAlongs and you'll be the first to know when we release any new videos. Now, as this was a kit, if you are looking at finding out what new kits we have available, just check out hashtag Minerva Kits. You can also follow that one and it will pop up into your feed as soon as we post any new kits. Now, if you haven't created an account on Minerva yet, I would highly consider doing so. It is a great place made just for makers where you can share all things creative and things that you have made. And if you're interested in checking me out on Minerva here, I will leave a link to my profile, which can be found at Sheer Stitchery. And until next time, makers, let's get our sewspiration on.